Hello friends and welcome back to House of Props. Today I will be making these Viking inspired bracers out of EVA foam and show you how to make your own faux fur completely from scratch. Let's get started. Using the template, I cut the pieces out of 2mm foam and attached them together with contact cement. You can find a link to my free template in the below description. Now would be a great time to click the subscribe and notification buttons so you can see my upcoming projects. Or if you're able to, scan this code so you can have this channel on your phone for when you're on the go. When I have the pieces glued together, I do a quick check to make sure they fit right before I continue with adding the details. Next, I attach some foam clay dragon scales with contact cement. You can see the process I used to make these scales in this video here. Next, I cut slits and attach 2mm foam strips through these cuts. I have the strips create X's so that it will look like leather binding when everything is finished. Then on each end of the bracer on the top and the bottom I glue half inch wide pieces of 2mm foam and use a hole punch to cut 6 openings for the lacing. Then on the front of the bracer I attach 3 8 inch wide strips along the top and bottom edges. I use the two additional panels to help hide the seams around the bracer. Then 3 8 inch wide strips are positioned and glued around these panels so the strips overlap the panel and the base. Then I heat the surface with the heat gun, not enough to seal it, but enough to make it a little warm. And then I roll this leather overstitch wheel over the heated area. This wheel creates small indentations across the surface and will help make the foam look hand stitched. These indentations also serve as a guide when I use an upholstery needle with crochet thread to create the actual stitching. When the sewing is finished, I heat the panel areas with a heat gun and use some leather stamps to emboss runes into the foam surface. These runes can spell out anything that you would want them to, but I'm using some protection spells. When the foam is back to room temperature, I will coat the bracers with Plasti Dip. For this project, it should take about two coats to get even coverage. After the Plasti Dip has cured overnight, I base the bracers with some raw sienna acrylic. When that's dry, I coat the surface with a chestnut wash. This layer helps tone down the yellow of the sienna and starts to bring in the leatherish colors. And when that is dry, I thin some burnt umber and brush this across the surface. To give the surface texture, I dab the burnt umber with a paper towel. 
By dabbing this way, it breaks up the paint across the surface and gives you a little bit of dimpling, which makes it look more like a leather texture. When the umber has dried, I make a very thin black wash and brush this into areas where grime would gather and blend the edges with just a little bit of water. I also use the same wash to enhance the rune lettering embossing. Next, I base the scales in a light burnt sienna. Then I dry brush red across the textured surface of the scale, but not the spikes. When the red has dried, I take some of this extreme sheen ruby red and brush this across the scale's surface. This extra sheen makes the scales look more reptilian and makes them stand out against the leather textures. I use Payne's Gray for the scale's spikes and shadowing. I like to use Payne's Gray as a shadow color when working with reds because the blue and the gray works with the red to create a deep plum color and this works really well as a shadow. As the final paint step, I dry brush some light tan around the edges of the leather and the tips of the scale spikes. This just adds a little bit more aging to the pieces. Now it's time to make the faux fur. I began by taking 4 inch long pieces of yarn and tie a knot in the center of each piece. I'm using white yarn, but you can use whatever color works for your project. Then I take several of these pieces and hold the knots with a pair of pliers. Then using a wire brush, like a pet brush, I pull the twist out of the yarn. You can also use a wire brush like this to really fluff up the yarn to look like fur. Next, I make a line of hot glue on a piece of plexiglass and press the knots of the yarn into the hot glue. So I don't burn my fingers, I use a palette knife to really push those knots down into that first layer of glue. I repeat this process until I have the length needed for one end of the bracers. Then I cover the top of the knots with more hot glue. Once the glue has completely cooled, it peels right off the plexi. I don't want the fur to be pure white, so I airbrush some burnt umber onto the area which is going to show. Once I'm done painting, I pull the wire brush through the yarn once more to make sure the paint doesn't cause the yarn to clump. I then glue these to the inside of the bracer with contact cement. and then fluff the fur one last time with the wire brush. As the last step, I take some faux leather cord and lace this through the holes I made earlier just like I do with my shoes.
And there you have it, some Viking inspired bracers made completely out of EVA foam instead of leather. I always try to find a replacement for leather whenever I can and EVA foam is often the best choice. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to House of Props. And remember, if you are building any of my builds or using any of my templates, feel free and tag me at House of Props on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I would really like to see your fantastic work. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.